a lot going on in Gen AI. And it's like every time you turn around, there's something cool. You want to play with RAG, there's no notebook LM. You want another ma massive mega LLM out? NVIDIA was here to make news. Open AI and what I think is a somewhat ridiculous evalu evaluation. But you know what? The money's piling in. So what the hell do I know? Uh, Copilot, uh, take your pick, man. Get Go ahead and I'll, I'll fill in the blanks. But what, uh, what caught your eye in the Gen AI uh, news of the week? Yeah, you know, we didn't catch this uh, uh, last week, but uh, Google brought out a service called Notebook LM. And essentially what it is, is an almost infinite RAG model uh, where you can do up to 2 million tokens, up to 50 different uh, data types, and they even have cool buttons you can press. Hey, you want a summary? You want a table of contents? Do you want kind of a, a blog style? And this is wild, Daniel is it will actually do a podcast between two people, uh, a man and a woman. And you can just imagine where this can go in the future. First of all, when it comes to personal RAG for a lot of use cases that even people like uh, us, uh, us do, you want to pile in all this content from disparate sources and be able to uh, query it, summarize it, uh, uh, do all that stuff. And and it's been a criticism that I've had of some of the big uh, makers here, because quite frankly, between Google and, and Microsoft, their personal RAG capability just, just was non-existent. You had to go to OpenAI, you had to go to Perplexity uh, to, to, to do that right. Perplexity has a cool feature that says, don't get anything from the internet, just take whatever is in the content that, that you've uh, throwing me. Their context, context window isn't, isn't high, but this context window is insane. Like Two million uh, from uh, Google. Uh, of course, we can improve. Does not support video content. Does not support uh, Word. Does not support XLS. Uh, you know, any of the Microsoft uh, formats. You can put in a link to YouTube, but only if YouTube has had time to go in and, and do a uh, transcript. But I'm going to be playing around with it uh, a lot more uh, in the future, but uh, I'm super excited uh, about, uh, about this. Uh, Microsoft did a major drop, uh, two fronts. So first of all, overall, uh, overall co-pilot. Um, and again, I'm still piling through it right now, but to me, it's kind of the AI assistant we had always envisioned, right? There's more personalization, uh, there's voice, uh, there's vision, and by the way, vision, not in the way that you, you might think. Um, and there's also, you know, a, a much more simplistic interface about what you can do. Uh, there's a daily, um, uh, readout that essentially is the you know the top news stories doesn't look personalized yet but it's read as if it's an NPR uh, um, uh, episode so I've kicked the tires uh, a little bit on it and then I think the biggest one is essentially you just have a conversation with it right uh, it's kind of like chat GPT uh, advanced uh, voice and by the way Gemini Gemini cranked uh, theirs out that uh, Google did. They cranked theirs out uh, the same uh, week. And I think Meta even came out uh, with theirs. But I would say, you know, this was the consumer launch uh, from Microsoft and very provocative, better than I thought. By the way, more risky for them, uh, but, but big. Um, and you can get this on your smartphone, Android, iOS. You can get this at the... Um, just on a, on a web browser, you can get this on Edge. Uh, you hit the Copilot key. Uh, you know it, it automatically comes up with the uh, the new uh, the new uh, the new capabilities. Uh, super exciting. There's no RAG uh, capability uh, on that. That uh, I think Copilot is the last service to not to 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 not have uh, RAG capabilities. Here's the second thing that that I'm super excited about. And these were Copilot Plus features, okay? And Copilot Plus features have the integrated NPU, amazing battery life, amazing, uh, amazing performance. But man, I am so super excited 
about the features that are come out because they're features that we all use. Do you use uh, Microsoft Photos? Do you use File Explorer? Everybody who uses Windows uses File Explorers uh, to go in and uh, and do uh, and do searches uh, on that um, and uh, do a semantic search. Hey, show me all my files that I've 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 created about a client, uh, an SOW uh, in the last uh, 12 months. And and this sucker uh, pops up. Show me a photo of me on vacation uh, with my three kids and wife um, and um, give me give me those uh, give give me those photos. Uh, for for photos, upscaling photos up to 8x. You have a low quality photo, upscale it. You want to do generative fill and erase. A lot of the features that we've seen uh, through a paid uh, paid Adobe um, subscription, uh, it does that too. Uh, one of the most popular Android features right now, getting a lot of use, and this came out through Samsung, is Circle to Search. Uh, Microsoft have their, has their version called Click uh, to Do. On vision, vision is like this. Vision is I'm on a web page and I just start querying it. And I ask, I literally ask the questions or type in the questions and it's looking at, at everything. To me, it's kind of a real time recall, okay? Uh, to be able to uh, query and then it's using uh, data from the internet to, to come in and, and make it uh, even uh, better. Finally, just to make a long story longer, uh, uh, good progress on VPNs uh, for ARM. Uh, looks like, you know, going to fill in that gap in the first quarter of, uh, of 25. Super excited. And of course, recall, bring it on. Windows Insider, not there yet. I'm excited. Yeah, there's so much going on, Pat. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the interesting stuff with Microsoft, too, when we get to the signal. Uh, what we're doing there in the in the lab and the testing stuff that we're doing, but uh, yeah, you hit on a lot of them, Pat. I think a couple of the most exciting things for me is one is just the very accessible RAG technology with what they're doing with Notebook. You know, I I've seen some reports. I've played with it a little bit. I, I'll be candid. I got to play with it some more. I'd like to t start putting some of our large data sets from uh, our intelligence platform through there and some of the big reports and start querying it just to see kind of what's available now. You can basically ingest the data, use language. They get really thoughtful responses with very little um, effort. This has really become, I mean, think about a year and a half ago, what it would have taken to build these capabilities and how it's been basically dropped at our doorstep now. We have, you know, what's going on with O1 and these reasoning engines. I mean, you have systems now that basically have the capacity to reason like an executive team. Remember when uh, Benioff talked about having a AI in your boardroom? I mean, the problem is the these things are way too inefficient power-wise right now yeah. to actually be um, used all day, every day. But if you could use O1 the way we're using like search and chat GPT, Pat, you may not even need me anymore. You could just oh. literally talk to the, the the reasoning engine when you're uh, trying to work your way through a through a you know modest dilemma like how do I get my biceps over 18 inches? Um, the <laughs> the um, you know, other thing I think that was really interesting to me this week, too, is this sort of pile on thing that's going on. We talked a little bit about the open AI valuation last week, but what's um, this NVIDIA large language model kind of got me rethinking now, Pat. You know, we've got all these different players contributing here to these frontier models. And now you have a company like NVIDIA that's actually just added one more layer to the stack. It's always been able to do sort of specialty models. Um, it's been in this space a long time. And of course, with its own hardware, it can train pretty much anything it wants. But you've got this really, I'd say, critical two lanes running of open source with Meta and NVIDIA that are really pushing and barreling down. And then, of course, you've got these kind of black box models that are that are gaining in popularity. And, you know, some would make me wonder why this NVLM thing didn't get more attention this week. Uh, it got some, but yeah. why it didn't get more because if, if, if I'm an investor, I mean, you heard Apple pulled out. Um, and obviously, there's been a ton of brain drain at OpenAI. But if I'm an investor and I'm investing, you know, six plus billion dollars as a group in a $157 billion valuation, I would want to know 
what makes it sticky in the long run. And when you've got companies like Meta with Mark Zuckerberg, I think he's now the second wealthiest person on the planet. And you've got Jensen saying, hey, we can kind of open source this, deliver a product. I think uh, this NBLM one outperformed uh, GPT-4.0 in a number of, of different um, benchmarks, not all of them, but some of them. Um, and then you start to think how you could integrate that with NIMS, you could integrate that with uh, CUDA, you could integrate that with hardware. And, and gosh, and then you start to see the, the why Accenture wants to double down. But I don't know, Pat, I just look at this and I go, this is going to get crowded. This is going to get noisy. And unless there's something in the in the back room, you know, that's so exciting and so, uh, you know, is that I'm not sure there's an advantage. And then on top of that, for chat GPT and open AI, I'm not sure there's an exit other than going public. It's really hard to go public at a valuation in the hundreds of billions when you haven't made a dollar in profit yet. So there's a lot going on, Pat. I think you hit a lot of the tech well. This space is evolving and changing so quickly. It's, uh, it's really, really exciting times.